Hi everyone, I'm really glad you're here today. Uh, for this video, we are going to make a picture of a lotus flower. And for mine, I chose to make it um, rainbow colored because I'm going through, I'm sure you've noticed, I've been going through a big rainbow phase lately. Um, your lotus flower does not have to be the same color though. You can make it absolutely any color you want. It could even be a black lotus flower if you want. It could be anything. Um, we're also going to make some lily pads. It's going to be on the water and we'll have a nice sky in the background. Um, for this project, we will be using uh, just some normal basic Crayola markers. Um, I'll be using the skinny kind, but you can use any of them. And we will be using some just Crayola crayons and a regular just normal pencil and I believe that's it unless I'm overlooking something. Um, you will need an eraser as well. I don't have a good one here at home so I'm just using the one with my pencil. Um, but as always um, I, we're not in a position to be picky so if you don't have the same supplies as me you can just get out the supplies you do have and you just you know, use your creativity and your problem solving skills and you can make the supplies that you do have work okay so we'll I'm going to change the camera angle and then we'll get to work okay so we're starting out with our paper going side to side and where it is short and it is fat okay and I'm gonna start out with the first petal right in the middle. Now before I draw stuff out, I like to plot it a little bit. And what that means is I'm putting dots or little marks where I'm planning on putting it. And that way I can take a look at it first and make sure I like the placement of it. And then that way if I need to fix it, instead of having to erase an entire petal, all I have to erase are these little marks, and it's a lot easier, okay? Now, I know I like where these are because I've planned it out ahead of time, and I am going to draw the first petal, and it's basically just your standard petal shape. This one, I went a little too far out, so I'm going to try to fix that. All right, now I'm gonna turn it just for a second to make sure I like it. Because being left-handed, I'm having to draw at an angle so that you guys can still see. All right, now I am going to do the petals that are on each side. So they're gonna start here and here, and they're gonna come down to the bottom of this one. So I'm gonna draw that basic shape. And I'm going to turn it just a little bit because it's hard to draw at an angle and not get it all crooked. Now see how I messed up and I fixed it? I'm not getting stressed out about it. I'm just, I just fixed it, erase it, and I move on. Now remember when drawing with a pencil, you don't want to press down really hard because if you do have to erase like I just did, it's really hard to erase it. So remember, draw light until you know you have it right. All right, now I'm going to do a petal in between these and it's be they're being overlapped by these three petals. And they're gonna be here and I'm gonna move this one over just a bit. I don't like where that one is. That one's too far over to the left. So again, it's a lot easier to erase a dot than an entire petal. So that's why it's always a good idea to plot it out and plan it out before you start drawing. All right, now you should be seeing the lotus flower evolving. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna draw the petals that are here in the front. So if we look at my example, I'm talking about these petals here, okay? So I'm going to plot one out here. And notice these petals are quite a bit shorter than these. 
and it has to do with space, the element space and perspective. And another art term would be foreshortening because it's coming straight at you, the viewer. It distorts your view of it a little bit and it looks smaller. Also, remember when you go down on the page, well actually here it's, that's doing the opposite because generally our rule is as we go down the page we're getting closer so your objects get what? Bigger. But here it's doing the opposite because of foreshortening. Foreshortening creates an optical illusion when something's coming straight at you, the viewer. Now that's kind of an advanced um, term and um, concept. You'll be learning a lot more about that as you get a little older, probably middle and definitely high school. All right, so there's my first one. And then the next two are gonna be here. All right, and then I'm also gonna have two here and here. And then we're gonna do two more. Now, I don't like where I planned those out, so I'm erasing those dots. And instead, they're gonna go here and here. And again, I have to turn it to draw that one. One of those times when being left-handed makes things a little more challenging. And there is my lotus flower. And I'm really happy with it so far. Now in the middle, I'm gonna draw these little lines. These lines are used a lot on petals and leaves to just suggest the, like the little, especially in leaves, you see those little veins that kind of go down the middle and that's like where the water is coming from the roots into the actual plant itself. All right, and so there is my basic shape and drawing of my lotus flower. Okay, now we're gonna work on our lily pads. If we look at my example here again, you can see the lily pad that the lotus flower is floating on. So again, I wanna kinda of plan it out. My lily pad is gonna start right about here and come over, over here. And you can see how I'm making those just little tiny marks so I can kinda of plot it out. And it's gonna come down about here. So, then I'm turning at an angle so I can draw it. And it's just kind of a rounded basic shape. And there is my lily pad. And I'm really happy with the first try I did with it there. Um, keep in mind, um, you might have, you might, you, yeah, I cannot talk. <laughs> it's possible you're going to want to erase it or alter it. So if you draw a light, it's a lot easier for you. Now, I'm going to put some little lily pads on the side. And these are kind of almost the shape of like a little lima bean or a paint palette. Okay, so I have my three lily pads and I'm going to just draw some little lines to kind of make them look a little more interesting. These are just kind of lines that kind of suggest the shape and definition of it. Okay, so I have my lily pads and my lotus flower. Okay, now we want to do our horizon line. Now your horizon line is where the sky and the ground come together. Because remember, you never put a blue line at top, the top for the sky and a green line at the bottom for the ground and then there's all this empty white space in the world. That's not how it is. The sky and the ground come together. Now, in this case, it's not ground, it's water. So I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a wavy line. It's not the ocean going crazy or anything, so you're not going bonkers with it. And I'm gonna just make a few lines that are suggesting 
the movement of the water. All right? And then I'm just going to make a sun up here, just a basic circle. Okay? And then some clouds. Now, for the clouds, you want it to be kind of loose and whimsical. So I'm going to hold my pencil really loose where it's, it's almost like I'm going to drop it just making some kind of fluffy clouds and notice how light I'm drawing you definitely don't want to draw dark when you're doing clouds okay so I have my clouds I have my sun I have my horizon line I have my flower and my three lily pads I have the lines that suggest the water and the shape of the lily pad Okay, now we're ready to start outlining with markers. Now, this project is different. Usually this is the point where we take a black Sharpie and we outline everything. But this time, believe it or not, we're gonna do it a little differently. I have the skinny Crayola markers and I'm gonna outline the petals with the rainbow colors. Now again, remember, you do not have to do yours the same as mine. You might wanna do completely different colors and that's fine. But I am doing the rainbow colors and because there's 12 petals and six rainbow colors, that means that there'll be two of each color because six plus six equals, and hopefully you just said 12. So I've done two red, I've done two orange, now I'm going to do two yellow, and then two green. I don't know why, but I just love outlining things. It's just so therapeutic for me, which means it makes you feel good in your brain and in your heart. When I was a little girl, I used to take coloring books and I didn't color in them because to me that was boring, but I would trace and outline things in them. I just, for some reason, and I think that also helped teach me how to draw because you're, you're paying attention when you're outlining and tracing things to the shapes that make up something. And, um, and that's one of the big keys to learning how to draw is being able to look at something and recognize what shape it is. For example, if I wanted to draw my cell phone, I would look at it and think, what shape is this? And it's a rectangle, but it's different than a typical rectangle because why? Because it has rounded corners. And so if you can start looking at objects that way, it helps you improve your drawing skills because that's what drawing is about, is breaking it down into simple lines and shapes. All right, so I have my lotus flower outlined. Now it's time for my lily pads. Now for my lily pads, I wanted to use a different green than what I used on the lotus flower because you want them to look different and have a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna start out with this kind of lime green and I am outlining the lily pad. And you may notice I'm not getting too stressed about staying on top of the pencil line, because that's not that important, because I'm gonna come back and erase them later. And I'm erasing this lily pad, or not erasing, tracing. <laughs> and this lily pad. So there's that one green. And now I'm going to use this kind of sea foam green and I'm adding those extra little lines here. And I'm also going to add a little bit to where I outlined it. Not a lot, just a little here and there. All right, so now I have my lily pads outlined. Now next is the water. Now again, 
I, I don't want to use the exact same blue I'm using on my lotus flower. So I'm using these two blues. You can see it's light, medium, darker. So I'm going to start off with the light one. And I'm tracing over my horizon line, which also happens to be the water. And I'm tracing over those lines that suggest the movement in the water. And then I'm taking that medium blue and adding some stuff here. All right. And then I only have one more thing to outline or trace. And what do you think that is? Hopefully you just said the sun, because it is the sun. Now, if you said the clouds, we are not outlining the clouds. And why do you think that is? Okay, hopefully you said something along the lines that if we outline them, it's going to make them not look right. They're going to look heavy and they're going to look weighted down. And we all know that clouds are the exact opposite. They're light and fluffy. That's why they're floating up in the air and defying gravity. All right, so I have everything outlined, which means I am ready to move on to the next step, which is erasing. Okay, so like I said before, I don't have one of the good erasers here at home. Usually I prefer the handheld white pearl eraser. Um, if I can't find that, my second choice would be a pink pearl eraser. But as we all know right now, being kind of stuck at home, you have to just take what you have and make it work. So I am just using the eraser at the end of this pencil and I'm erasing any pencil I can still see. There's especially here on my lotus flower, like right here where this yellow is, I don't know how well you can see it, but the pencil and the yellow, because the yellow is so white, it really stands out. So I'm trying to go and erase that as much as I can. There's some places where if the marker is right on top of your pencil, you're not gonna be able to erase it because the marker kinda locks it in. But if your marker is kind of over to the side of the pencil, you can erase quite a bit of it. That's how I was able to erase so much of it on this petal. This petal. All right, I'm erasing any pencil I can see in my lily pad. And the lines that show the movement of the water my little lily pads, of course, and the horizon line. Don't skip this erasing step. I know it's tempting to do that because you think, oh, that's no big deal. I'm just going to move on. But you do see it later, and then you won't enjoy the picture quite as much. I'm erasing where I can on the sun. I got up most of the marker on top of the pencil, so it's kind of locked in. But I'm not gonna erase my clouds because I still need those. Okay, now I'm ready to begin coloring my lotus flower. And I'm gonna use my rainbow colored crayons. These are just your basic um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Um, I couldn't find my normal regular orange, so I had to settle for it. a yellow orange, but it still looks pretty normal. And I'm going to take it. Now just like always, when you're coloring, you want to choose a direction and you want to stick with it. And so I am coloring my petals top to bottom or up and down, going with the shape of the petal. And I'm coloring softly and I'm coloring neatly because I still want to see where I outlined it with the marker that makes you don't want to press down super hard with it you want to keep it soft so there's my red and my orange and again stick with the direction don't scribble and go a gazillion different directions because you can see that it's like brush strokes you can see what you did later and then again you won't be as happy with your picture and you won't enjoy it as much 
All right, so there's my red and my orange. Next is my yellow. And again, I'm sticking with the top to bottom, going with the shape of my petal. And now I have my green. And again, color soft. You don't want to lose that marker outline. If you press down really hard with your crayon, you might as well just be coloring it with a marker because you're going to lose that outline and that contrast, which shows you what's a little bit different. All right, my dog's running inside. I'm going to have to go let him in real quick. Okay, I'm back. So, I'm not sure exactly what I was saying, but I think I was saying about coloring softly and not pushing down too hard. I'm going to have to turn this a little bit. Again, hashtag left-handed problems. <laughs> All right, you can see where I got out on the line a little bit there. Sometimes you can luck out and erase that a little bit. And other times you're not quite so lucky. All right, I made it lighter. That way you can't see it quite as much. All right, and then my purple petals. My innovator petals. <laughs> this could be like a house lotus. It has all of our house colors, except for the black for the scholars, but you know, yellow is your backup color. All right, and now I have my petals. They look so pretty. I love them. All right, now I am ready to color my lily pads. Now for my lily pads, I have three different greens. I have a yellow green, I have a forest green, and I have a sea green, okay? I'm not using the normal regular green because I use that on my lotus flower petal and I want there to be a difference. So I'm gonna start off, you always wanna go from light to dark. So it's gonna be sea green, yellow green, forest green. So I'm gonna start off with the sea green, and for my lily pads, I'm coloring side to side or left to right. Now notice I'm just putting a little bit of the sea green. I'm just kinda of adding, now I'm not scribbling, but I'm not being rigid and formal either. I'm just kinda of adding it here and there, and I'm only coloring left to right side to side and I just added a little bit of it so it's just like a little touch of the sea green. This is very similar to when we did the water on our whale family picture or yeah I guess the water. All right so now I've got the yellow green and I'm coming through on the white right next to that sea green and I'm adding some of the yellow green and see I'm eventually and slowly covering up all of the white. But again, I'm not scribbling. I'm not rushing. Now you may notice I'm doing it kind of fast, but it's also because I've been doing it a really long time. Now I'm doing the forest green and basically I'm gonna fill in all the rest of the green. There won't be any white on this when I'm done. So I'm finding all the little white spaces, big or small, short or tall, and I'm filling them up. But this way, it just doesn't look so flat and blah as if you use just one green. And that's one of the big things to taking your art to the next level is using different values and shades of a color. You don't wanna always just use the same old things. If you're using colored pencils, you can layer colored pencils, put one color on top of the other, especially if you have the Prismacolor ones. Prismacolors layer so nicely. All right, and now my lily pads are colored. And so far, I'm really happy. Okay, now I'm gonna do my sun. And I'm gonna do some layering of the colors again, meaning I'm putting one on top of the other. 
And again, you want to go from light to dark. So for this one, I've got yellow. This one is macaroni and cheese, which is basically yellow orange. And this one is yellow orange. But you can see they're almost identical, but I'm still gonna layer them. I'm gonna start with the yellow and I'm coloring side to side, not scribbling. Then I'm gonna take my macaroni and cheese and I'm just gonna add a little bit on top here and there. And then I'm gonna add my yellow orange and add just a little more. And then basically I have a cute little sun. Okay, now we're gonna do the sky. And you've probably been wondering, okay, well, how on earth is she gonna do the sky with those clouds? Because she didn't outline them, she didn't do anything with them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my crayon and this crayon is sky blue. I don't know if you can see that or not. And what I'm gonna do is right here where this pencil is, hopefully you can see it. And I'm gonna color right up to the pencil. And that way it kind of camouflages and hides that pencil because I'm coloring right up to the line, but not over. If you look, I'm being very, very careful to just do that. I'm still choosing a direction. I'm coloring side to side. But this way it kind of hides that pencil line if you drew soft and light. Now, if you press down hard with your pencil, unfortunately, there's not much we can do at this point you're gonna see that line. But you could take that as a lesson learned and next time you draw clouds, what are you gonna do different? Hopefully you just said you'll draw lighter. And so I'm, see how I kind of surrounded that? It's almost like a little sky halo going around it. And I'm doing the same here. there it went over my line just a little bit but that's okay as long as I don't just keep doing that over and over you don't want to good thing about art you don't want to stress over it it shouldn't be stressing you out it should be relaxing and enjoyable if art is stressing you out you're doing something wrong most of the time is that you're trying to do something you're trying to make something too perfect which is the majority of the time or you're trying to do something that's too hard. Maybe you're in first grade and you're trying to do something that's meant for fourth graders. Now I'm not saying it's not good to challenge yourself, because sometimes you can. Like there's one second grade group, I can't remember which house it is, but we have one second grade group at our school that does origami when we do centers. And you know, typically only third and fourth grade do origami. But those kids, for whatever reason, you were ready for origami a year early. And you're actually better at origami than Ms. Thompson is. So sometimes you are ready to take things to the next level. And sometimes you're not. And the way you can tell if you're ready is the way you feel. If you feel stressed and like it's really hard, that means you're not ready. If you really curious about it and you think I think I might be able to do that give it a try because if you can't it's no biggie just come back to it later wait a month two months six months and try again you can see now I'm filling in the rest of the blue notice how I have paper under my paper to protect my table be sure you do that for your parents most of you have really nice homes and nice furniture and I'm sure your parents want to keep it that way. So you can see I'm just filling it in. I'm not doing anything too fancy with the sky because the focus is more on the water and the lotus flower and the lily pads. And, you know, last week we did the whale family. I was really happy with the ones that I saw on Flipgrid. 
I love how you guys get on Flipgrid and share your art with me. It makes me so happy and it makes my day because I get to see your face. I get to hear your voice. And most importantly, I get to see your art. Be sure I always comment on your videos. It may take me one or two days, sometimes even three or four days, depending on how many there are. But I go in on each and every one of yours and I leave a personal video comment for you. So if you're not going back to your Flipgrid videos, be sure you do. If you're curious what I have to say. <laughs> if you don't want to know what I have to say, you can just ignore it. But I do that for each and every one of you since we don't get to see each other in person. And there were some of you from the first week that we had we we're staying at home and doing our virtual learning. I was putting the comments in the wrong place, but I went back and I fixed all of those. So if you have one for the, from the first week and you're thinking, I didn't get a video, go back and look because you probably have one now. All right, so now the sky is done. I basically just colored it with the sky blue. You can see the clouds a lot more. Hopefully if you drew lightly, those lines kind of disappeared. And now we're ready to do the water. Okay, now for the water, I have four colors. This one is a blue, it's cerulean. I might be pronouncing that wrong. This one is one of my favorites. It's beautiful. <laughs> I hope you can see that. It's like with the word be blue and beautiful combined. Um, this one is blue green. And this is just good old, well, not good old brown, it's sepia, but basically brown. Now the brown may surprise you a little bit, but just stick with me here. I'm gonna start with the cerulean, because that's actually the lightest. And I'm gonna come in here and color my water. I'm coloring side to side. And the reason for that is, that's how I drew those lines to show the movement of the water. The water would be moving this way or this way. So, you want your crayon strokes to work with it. Now for the cerulean, I'm gonna go through, notice I'm coloring softly. I'm coloring neatly. I'm coloring side to side and going around my lily pads. But where you have these lines, you can go right on top of them. And now again, remember Miss Thompson can color fast because she's been doing this for a very, long time. I've been an art teacher longer than you guys have even been alive. And plus before that, I was an art student. Even though I was still in fourth grade just this past week in a game you played that, um, or maybe it was the week before, that when I was growing up, I actually took more music lessons than I did art lessons. I played the flute and I was in band and I played a lot of music. So I'm able to read music and I don't know if I could play it anymore. It's been so long. I could maybe get out a pathetic tune of sorts, but when I was growing up, I did more music than I did art. And it was actually when I got older that I kinda, in college, I just kinda let the music go and focused on just art. And obviously you see where I ended up as an art teacher. All right, so there's my water with just a nice coat of cerulean. Now I'm gonna come in with the blue-green. And kind of like I did with my lily pad, I'm just adding a little bit of it here and there. See how I'm kind of doing that? I'm still coloring side to side. Just kind of, almost if you've ever been on the lake or driving over the lake and you've noticed how some areas of the lake look a little darker than others, like I'm doing here, and the reason for that is that those areas are a little deeper. And sometimes, unfortunately, it's also that pollution is <laughs> sitting there in that part of the water. So that's it with the blue-green. I didn't spend too long on that. Now I'm going to take the beautiful. I'm not going to do it on top of the blue green, but I'm going to do it next to the blue green. 
kind of like I did here. So it's kind of like, like interlocking puzzles in a way that kind of connect together. I'm leaving some of the cerulean. I don't want to lose all of that. No, Milo, you don't need to go out again. My dog keeps wanting to go in and out and in and out because it's really beautiful outside today. See how I'm just adding the beautiful. I love the beautiful. <laughs> it's a little funny saying that um, because it's a little darker than the other blues. And so you can kind of get a little bit of a contrast in there. And again, remember contrast is when you have two things, you compare them and you can see a difference. Adding a little more beautiful here. And maybe a little bit here in the corner. And then I think that's enough beautiful. If I do any more, I'm going to lose too much of that cerulean. All right, now, you've probably been wondering what on earth is she going to do with that brown? So what we're going to do with the brown is we're going on top of it just a little bit here and there. And the reason for that is this is supposed to be a pond. And ponds, especially here in Texas, they are not a beautiful blue color. They're kind of a murky, icky, muddy color. <laughs> Unless it's one like you have in your backyard that's man-made and your parents clean it out and all that stuff. So I'm just adding a little bit of brown here and there just so it's not so perfect. That's not much at all. In fact, most people probably won't even notice that they have it. All right, now let's straighten this up a little bit. Now I'm almost done. I just have one last little thing. Okay, so the last thing is to take a marker or a pen and in the bottom right corner, you want to mark yourself as the artist. And that's basically it. So be sure you go to Flipgrid and um, leave a little video or picture showing me your lotus flower. And like I said before, I love seeing your Flipgrid submissions. It, it makes me really happy. And I leave each and every one of you a personal video comment. Um, so that way it's almost like we get to talk to each other. And I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but you can even leave a comment to my comment and then I can leave a comment to your comment to my comment and it, we can even almost have a conversation. So just in case you didn't know that, I wanted to make sure you did. So I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy, listening to your parents, being nice to your brothers and sisters, and I hope to see you all soon. Bye.